Well, <clears throat> hello. I'm live from Westchester, New York, <clears throat> heading into an event that starts, what time is it now? Ooh, it's almost 4 o'clock. Event starts at 6, so I thought I'd jump on, just had some nourishment, and um, <clears throat> I have a topic. I think it's kind of dark in here. Let's turn on some lights. So I'm staying at Hyatt House, which has um, these little suites. They're kind of cute. I don't know if you can see. You got a whole kitchen over here. It's kind of cute. And you got a living area over here. And you got a bedroom over there. And the standard stuff. So, so I'm going to be contrarian today. I've had many people say to me, Diane, you say stuff that contradicts itself. How am I supposed to follow you? You confuse me, Diane. Recently, I did a talk on you got to get in to get out. A lot of people like that concept. You got to get in. <clears throat> like if you want to get out of your job, you have to get in by working your job and your business. You got to work two, right? You got to work both to get out. So you got to get in to get out. If you want to get weight off of you, right? You got to get in and you got to do all this work and physical stuff so that you can get out so that your body is healthy again. And I could go on and on and on. Hello, Trisha. You're not very far from me. Uh, of all the things that go with that quote, which my mentor taught me, you got to get in to get out, right? You got to get in to get out. Guys, if you're in a car accident and you're in pain, and they tell you you have to go to physical therapy, you actually have to get into more pain, right? If anybody's ever done it, you know. You have to get into more pain to get out of pain. Well, today, I'm going to tell you the opposite and mess with your head. You got to get out to get in. You got to get out to get in. And by the way, these are called polar concepts. They're complementary concepts. Um, today, I'm going to a, uh, should have set my phone up. One of these days, I'll get a tripod or something and be professional like all those other fancy marketers. But mostly, I have a spinny, spinny chair again, so I'm pretty happy. Um, <clears throat> you got to get, so you got to get in to get out, but you got to get out to get in. What does that mean? So today, I'm going to a uh, marketing seminar over here run by Mr. Ryan Lee. <clears throat> and Ryan was, um, gosh, one of the biggest guys in the fitness side of things. Just huge, absolutely huge. And Ryan had all kinds of guru-esque marketing for years. And it was all, you know, this sexy, make money stuff. Um, Kimberly, you're saying that I look good today. So why are you sorry? Thank you. <laughs> I just look average, I think. But um, so he had all this guru stuff. And then um, he had kids and he just had a revelation that, um, you know, we all don't have to do all this guru stuff and we don't have to promise everybody they're going to get rich in a day. And he started to understand the difference between long term customer bases and short term customer bases. Subir, are you really going to Hawaii? I just saw that in my thread very quickly. If you are, I'm thrilled for you. I'd say I'm jealous, but I'm not jealous because you deserve it and I'm thrilled for you. I'll get there myself. So I'm going to this event. And Ryan Lee is not of this space. In fact, I dare say that I will go to this event and I will not know a single person in the room, which I'm very much looking forward to, meeting some new people. A lot of fitness people, a lot of copywriting people, people, a whole different crowd. And the reason why I'm coming is one, because Ryan's really smart. Two, because it's driving distance local. I did get a room for tonight because I didn't want to drive home, but I could have. It was an hour and a half, but I didn't want to have to drive home after my brain was full or I might want to work. So, um, so it was local, right? So one, it's so exciting to have, you know, an internet marketing expert in Connecticut. So one, he's really smart. Two, and he focuses on continuity and building things of your own, which is a big interest of mine right now. Two, he's local. And three, because I understand the concept of you got to get out if you want to get in. I need to leave our space. I didn't make a fuss about going because if I did, a bunch of people would come. Hey, Ron. Hey, Les. Hey, Chris, everybody. Um, I got to get out of our space in order to learn new skills to bring back into our space. And I want to encourage you guys all to consider doing that. I love, hello, Taylor. I'm sorry we won't all see each other next week, but, you know, there was a time and a place for everything, and there's a reason for everything. I'm sure that, uh, you know, we're not going to be down in Florida for a reason. And actually, truthfully, it worked out well for me because two events back-to-back -back makes me tired. So I want to encourage you guys. I love the network marketing home business space. Okay, attraction marketing, all the stuff that we are in. 
Um, and I encourage you to study uh, as much as you can in our space, especially if you're in network marketing. There's a lot of books and different things that you should uh, check out and you should learn and you should get through. But sometimes it's a really great idea to pick something up. Miss you too, Taylor. Let's talk soon. We never did get a chance to catch up um, and I just definitely want to talk to you guys. Um, sometimes you have to leave the space in order to see the space better. Um, one of my biggest breakthroughs was back in, I don't know, 2007, 2008, I had gotten invited to go to a big internet marketing event that was hardcore internet marketing. It was like SEO and LMNOP and most of the stuff that's very technical, that's not my arena. But this was a very high-end gathering and I got invited, so I went. And um, it, in fact, it was $800 a month uh, for the whole year to get to go to these events. So this was a high level thing. And I distinctly remember sitting in the room. A lot of you guys might know who Andy Jenkins is. He, uh, has the, um, the, 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 the webinar thing, uh, whatever it's called. Hi, I'm getting old. I can't remember things, but you know what I mean? The, the webinar jam, he and, uh, Mike or whoever run that thing. So, um, I remember sitting in the room and there was probably five, 600 people there. We were in Atlanta. And Andy Jenkins from the front of the room said, and my God, this is the guy that was the pinnacle of internet marketing. There was him, Evan Pagan. These were like the, the, the rat pack of internet marketing. He said, guys, I hate to break it to you. Your, your competition is no longer uh, a genius programmer from the Silicon Valley. Your competition is a housewife with two kids in Kenosha. And I remember sitting there and went, no, actually, it's a housewife with two kids in Connecticut. And they were teaching some of the fundamentals of video marketing. And I ran out of that room. My friend Steve was with me, who, by the way, probably isn't watching, but Stevie P, happy birthday. No, you just have one. Um, I remember getting up and literally grabbing my stuff and sidebar in the story is I was sick as a dog and I insisted on going to the meeting. I was really, really sick and I was literally with my head down on the desk. Remember when you were a little kid and your teacher used to make you put your head down to take your nap or whatever? I had my head down on the table. I couldn't even pick my head up. I was so congested and so miserable, but I wouldn't leave until I got my nugget. And I heard him say it. And all of a sudden I knew what I had to do and I said, that's it, Steve. I'm good. I'm going back to the room. He goes, are you going to lay down? I said, no, I have to work. I had left the space, right? I had left the space. I had to go outside of our space to get a revelation that brought me back into the space with a much bigger impact. So, and after that, the rest was history. That was when things went wild and I started getting asked on the stages and all the stuff and I became very well known. So sometimes... You really got to read books, and I've read extensively, outside of our space and applied it to our space. Sometimes you got to get into events that are outside of our space and apply it to our space because, okay, ready? I'm going to break something to you. When everybody's saying the same thing over and over and over, and I know we, you know, grew up on duplication and all that other good stuff, but today everybody can see all of us, and we're all doing and saying the same exact thing, it generally doesn't help us and it generally doesn't help the whole space. When we become innovators and what we're doing is, guys, I firmly believe in duplication, duplication of leadership, duplication of philosophy, concepts and ideas. I don't believe in duplication of words. Back in the day, a script was great because nobody heard somebody saying the scripts to, the, to people over and over and over. But when you try to go on Messenger and say the same thing to hundreds of people, um, it doesn't work because it, it, it gets tired really quick, okay? You have to learn how to be an innovator, to have a new um, look at things, maybe a new way you're lining things up, maybe a new way to use testimonials and stories, maybe a new way to create the funnel, maybe a new way to run, you know, um, not too long ago webinars were everything. Now Facebook Live is becoming very popular. There's always something new going on, a new communication venue that we can use. So getting outside of the space allows me to come back in with new eyes. And that's what I'm hoping to do this weekend. Will I get some grand nugget? I don't know. Maybe I'll just meet some cool new people and hang out. It was a short drive. It's no big deal. 
Will I get, you know, I invested, it, it, the event wasn't very expensive either because he doesn't overcharge. You know why? He knows he's so good that he doesn't need to overcharge for gatherings like this because when somebody really wants to work with him one-on-one, -on -one, they're willing to pay. That's his philosophy. He helps lots of people like me. I help lots of people. Only certain people are meant to coach um, and, and get consulting from me one-on-one. -on -one. Only certain people are meant to be a protege or a client. And, and that's cool. I don't expect that everybody is supposed to be. Um, so I try to help everybody and have reasonable things that people can access, etc., so that I can locate the people that are supposed to be, you know, like a Burt Bledsoe, you know, somebody who I was able to really give something to. He was able to receive it. He was ready to go. So sometimes you got to get in to get out, right? You got to do double duty. You got to work twice as hard if you want to get out on your job. If you're hurt and you want to get out of pain, you got to work twice as hard. You got to build that muscle back up. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt twice as much. But to get out of pain, you got to get into pain. I could go on all day about you got to get in to get out. But this time I'm telling you, sometimes you got to get out. You got to get out of the dogma. You got to get out of the lingo. You have to get out of the the everybody thinking the same you got to get out of the 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 noise in order to look back with perspective and to see something new and bright and shiny um our tendency as humans is to run in packs right we tend to run as animals as as, as creatures we tend to run in packs and we tend to look around and go am i doing it right am i doing what everybody else is doing the innovator the leader is looking for a new way to get their their pack to wherever they need to go right to get their group to wherever they need to be so i encourage you guys to do it get out of the noise i mean and guys you don't have to go to a seminar all the time maybe it's just a different book maybe you read something you know guys i read a lot of philosophy i lead a lot i read a lot of spiritual stuff like universal wisdom things that don't you know never go away i've read about pretty much every religious uh, history um, I read a lot of history. Actually, I'm a liar. I listen to a lot of history and I watch a lot of biographies and documentaries. Um, I don't read that stuff. I have a hard time reading it. I'm ADHD, so it's definitely a challenge for me. But I'm consuming lots of content outside of just this arena. And that makes me more effective, a better storyteller. Have you read any books or, or learned anything about storytelling? Um, let me tell you, uh, storytelling will change your career. Have you read anything about like biographies of great people about how they're thinking? And again, go on Netflix. If you're not a big reader, there's a gazillion things. Are you listening to podcasts of different people? You know, when you're working out or you're taking a walk or you're, you know, whatever you're doing when you're driving, there's so many great podcasts. I listen to podcasts all about different business aspects um, copywriting, marketing ideas, um, so on and so forth. Um, and then obviously getting to events and hanging out with people with different ideas, thinking differently. So anyway, this is my weekend of getting out to get in. Um, I'm looking forward to it and a little nervous. I expressed to one of the girls that I was talking to on the way down, um, I'm not the most social kitty. Um, you know, everybody thinks I am because they see me at events or they see me on here. They're quite truthfully walking into a room of people I don't know makes me somewhat anxious um, so what I did hello Erica um, you know another line I was taught a long time ago is what you give away you get to keep and you know everything will return back so I did a call this afternoon trying to help some people out in fact only one person that I know of made it on and we spent an hour together she ended up getting an hour one-on-one -on -one complimentary because I wanted to give something away so that I could walk into the room ready to receive. There's another tip there. If you get nervous or you're freaking out, go out and give so that what you give away can come back to you. Um, but yeah, I get nervous and weird and I'm not good at small talk and I'm not good at, oh, I love your jacket and all that other stuff. Um, you'd think I would be. The reason why I'm good with people that I've met online is because I know something about them. So it's much easier for me. Facebook is like a cheat sheet. Social media is a cheat sheet. I could see things about you. I know like Sabira came on and I said, Sabira, are you really going to Hawaii? That's awesome. I know that because I saw it in passing. So I'm excited. I want to celebrate her going to Hawaii. Most of you guys, I know stuff about you because you've shared it with me, you know, out on Facebook. So it's much easier to have a conversation when you know what was somebody was doing yesterday, right? It's just like, it's more comfortable with your own friends. 
right? So when I go in and I have nothing, I have nothing, you know, I wish everybody had a sign on their back that said, I like pizza, I have two kids, I grew up in Wisconsin. You know, if everybody had a little sign on their back, it would be so much easier. But when you have to figure that out, I'm not that good at it. So um, makes me makes me a little wiggy. So um, yeah, Sarah, you know, practicing relationship skills here on the book, on the book. Um, you know, and I'm fine. I don't want to make it out the wrong way. But I just want you guys to know that I, I dare say that many of the top producers you know in this industry um, have social anxiety. <laughs> Isn't that bizarre? Um, that's why we like the Internet. Um, they used to say, you shouldn't be hiding behind your computer. And I'd say, I'll hide behind my computer all day long because my computer is giving me the assistance that helps me, you know, be successful with people. So when you take away my crutch, and I'll admit it's a crutch, my training wheels, right, I get a little wobbly. I'm fine after a little bit of time, but I'll walk in and I'll sit in the back of the room, just like I always do, and I'll wait, you know, until I can connect with somebody on something, or I'll wait until there's some point where I can share something that's helpful. And um, the other thing that I've always relied upon, guys, this will sound stupid, and I always did it since I was a kid. I would try to know a lot about a topic before I got involved with someone uh, or something, because that way I I became a resource for people. Um, so, like for example, I know a, quite a bit about this man's teaching. Um, I've been through his sites and his trainings, etc. So there's a good chance that I've probably looked at more or followed his work more than most of the people in the room. So therefore, as the conversation progresses, sooner or later in the conversation, people will start to realize I know something about it. So using knowledge as a crutch um, has been something I've always done. Um, you know, even when I went off to college, I made sure I knew where everything on the campus was. So when everybody else was getting lost, I could help them. It gave me confidence. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but that's the type of stuff that I do. I find ways around, um, you know, the things that scare me or the things that are my weakness. Um, you know, I did say hi in their Facebook group. Um, it looks like a lot of people know each other. So here's another tip. Um, I'll figure out who the kingpin is, right? There's always, in a group, there's always a kingpin. And so I'll figure out who the kingpin is, and then that will be the person I try to bridge a relationship with. Because once I have a relationship with the kingpin, it will be easy to meet everybody else. Does that make sense? Um, you know, it's funny because this past weekend, I did a live the other day, and Trisha's on. She knows we ended up, um, Trisha was the one who, who met. Um, somebody from the Basketball Hall of Fame, a famous basketball player. We didn't know who he was. He came over and sat down, and Trisha was talking to him. The next day, Trisha had to go home, and I was with them. And because I knew him, I was able to have conversation with all of these Basketball Hall of Famers. Now, I know nothing about basketball, but the one thing I will tell you is as soon as I figured out their names, because that's what she was chatting with him, and I was figuring out who it was. And I was figuring out what he was known for. And then he introduced me to another girl and he told me that he was inducted to the Hall of Fame the same year. So I ran to the restroom. This is true confessions. I ran to the bathroom and looked up Basketball Hall of Fame class of 2011 and I found her picture. Come to find out she's a five-time Olympic medalist, four-time gold medalist, right? So you're able to come back in. So I come back out and I now know the bios of the people I'm sitting with. Now, what I don't want to do is go, oh, my God, you're a four-time Olympic gold medalist, because then it freaks her out. But then I can say something, like in passing, like um, like when you guys were in Barcelona, I remember watching those games I was in wherever. Or the L.A. Olympics, I remember watching the men's games or something. So now I can refer to something that she's familiar with or that's part of her history without being a fangirl. So I don't know if that's helpful, but that's like a cool thing to do. You just start to find out. So I'll just figure out who are the ringleaders in the room. I'll be able to go back into the Facebook group. That actually, this is very valuable. Let me break this down. I will go into the room. There's a Facebook group for the people that are attending this event and other people. There's everybody who's a member of his site. And people, as he calls them by name, I'll be able to go into the group and search the names and then based upon their picture, I'll be able to tell who they are and I can read their Facebook profile, okay? So now when I actually have a chance to talk to the people, 
it's much easier for me to say something about, like if I know they live local. Say I came down early before the traffic on 287 started up. A phrase like that tells them I'm local or know the New York area. It changes the way we talk to each other. So I don't know if any of that stuff makes sense, but these are the cheats I use. Um, I also use hashtags at events to attract people to talk to me. But this event, I don't, I don't know that we're going to have a hashtag or not. It's kind of a small thing. It's in a little, you know, collective workspace. It's not big fancy um, anything. So I have to use the intelligence. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, uh, being a spy. I have to use the intelligence that I can get to figure out who's who to figure out what's important to someone so that I can have a conversation with them. I may find out that I know something that they don't know that I can help them with. Um, they may know something that I don't know. Maybe we have mutual contacts. That's another thing. I do know a bunch of people in the sports and fitness arena. So maybe we know some mutual people that I've met at other events because I've stepped outside of the space many times for high level events. You tend to meet a lot of people. So we could have mutual relationships that helps. Oh, my God, you know Brad. Brad's awesome. I got to tell you this crazy story about the thing that Brad did this time. Um, you know, stuff like that. So those are my techniques. Wish me luck. Hopefully uh, it'll all go well. I'm going to write a letter to my list before I head over. And being wild and crazy, I'm not even going to take my car over because it's a little more congested. Area. I'm going to Uber over. And that way, if anybody wants to go out afterwards, I don't have to worry about driving. Um, in case I won't have a glass of wine or anything. So that's my strategic plan. I'm getting out of the industry this weekend to come back in with some new ideas, fresh eyes, and thoughts. So I hope everybody has a great evening. Happy weekend. Um, I'm not doing weekend. I'm doing work this weekend. But that's okay with me because every day is a weekend. And that's it. So hopefully some of that stuff helped you guys. Go read a book or something. Go check out something. Go look at something outside of our space. Do you guys know what Flip is on your phone? I think it's, I don't know if it's called Flip or it's an app. And you can um, tell it that you want to learn or to read articles about certain subjects. And then every day you can just go through and you go blip, 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 and you can flip through different uh, you know things so that if you want to know more about what's going on in the mobile space or whatever. TDA eight or nine. What does that mean, Debbie? I don't know what that means. What does TDA stand for? Work end. <laughs> that sounds naughty, Sarah. <laughs> Work end as opposed to the weekend. So, uh, all right. I guess we're done. Anyone have anything they need or I can do for them? Everybody's happy? Good? Fabulous? You're giving me hearts. Somebody loves me, but most everybody's gone now. So I'll see you guys later. Everybody have a good one.